Hello, welcome to another podcast of Portuguese with Carla, podcast 11. My name is Carla Sabala from Portuguese with Carla. And, and my name is Marlon Sabala from are. Portuguese with, with you. With, yeah, Portuguese with Carla husband. Is that good? Is that good? Is that good? <laughs> I don't know. We're not going to put that on the, on the podcast uh, okay. title, but yes, no. that's good. Uh, good. So yes. um, podcast, e, what did you say? 11? 11. 11. So it will be on portuguesewithcarla.com slash podcast 11. Uh, that's where you will find the YouTube video. You can listen to it as well as follow the transcript. You can get the flashcards and you can get audio quizzes and all sorts of freebies on that, um, on that URL. Yeah, please check it out and do make the most of the transcript. It does make a huge difference if uh, you follow it along as you listen to it. Uh, I've had some uh, people just listening to it and then they actually decided to look at the transcript and they've realized the difference it makes because you have two senses, not just uh, your hearing, but your um, vision or your sight. So, yeah, by yeah, all means. Makes a difference. Yeah, very good. Today. So again, this week we have uh, my mother. Yes. Hola. <laughs> that's lovely yeah so she's joining us again because we're carrying on the scene at the restaurant aren't we so we, yes we're that's right and we just happen or... to be here in in portugal that's well right, we actually yeah. by the time you hear this we, we're not going to be here no but, but uh, we just but make we them. are here now so we thought it might be a good idea to record with different people so next week we'll have a different portuguese native for yes. you to listen to so that'll be that'll be good um, now then, uh, we are still in the restaurant, is, is that right? That is right. Um, so what, what's going on? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll find myself with a bit of tuna in between... Stuck in your uh, tooth? In between teeth. Okay, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I, I start on this one, right? Yes, you go for it. Okay. Tenho aqui um bocado de atum enfiado no dente. Então pede um palito à empregada. Entretanto eu vou ali à casa de banho. Olha, se faz favor, por acaso não tem palitos? Sim, estou aqui. Ah, obrigadinho. E os senhores são de cá? Não, estamos aqui uns dias de férias. Ah, muito bem. Espero que estejam a gostar. Já foram a Quinta Berardo? Vamos amanhã. A forma mais fácil de lá chegar é de teleférico. Por acaso, reparei no teleférico, mas não sabia para onde ia. Sim, e até é mais barato do que o táxi. Ah, pronto. Obrigado pela dica. De nada. Então, já está? Sim, vamos embora. Boa noite. Boa noite. Boa noite. Well, that would be it. Thank you very much, Mama Sabala, once again. Muito obrigada. Obrigado, eu. Ok, obrigado, mãe. Então, uh, qualquer dia a gente grava um, talvez, talvez em dezembro. We come back in December so we can record another one with you. How's that? Está bem. Eu fico cá à espera. <laughs> <laughs> Ótimo. Então, tchau. 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 Righty. Uh, I thought we could translate this, the whole scene, into English so the listeners have an idea of what we're saying before we actually break it down. Okay. Okay. All right, then. Um... So I'll have to play my lines and play your mom's lines. Okay, that's fine. So I'll start off. I say, I've got a piece of tuna stuck between my teeth. Then ask the waitress for a toothpick. In the meantime, I'm just going to the bathroom. And then I say, uh, look, um, please, do you have toothpicks? Yes, uh, they right here. So then I say, thank you very much, or thank you little. <laughs> Are you um, both from here? Okay, then I say, no, we're just here a few days on holiday. Ah, very well. I hope you uh, have been enjoying yourselves. Have you been to uh, Quinta Berardo? We're going tomorrow. The easiest way to get there is by the cable car. Well, we noticed the cable car, but we couldn't can't quite figure out where it was going. Not we, but I. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, yes, and it's even cheaper than the taxi. Oh, good. Thanks for the hint. You're welcome. And then I come out of the bathroom and I say, Right, you sorted? Yep, and I say, Yes, let's go. 
Good evening. Okay, great. So let's go back to the beginning here. Mm -hmm. And um, because obviously even with the direct translation, um, it it might not be um, straightforward as to what what we're saying. And and we didn't do a translation word by word, as we learned last week, a calc uh, on, on purpose because you wouldn't do that. That doesn't make any sense. So, I say, tenho aqui um bocado de atum enfiado no dente. I have here a piece of tuna uh, stuck in my teeth. In my tooth, rather. I use a singular version. So, tooth, dente. No dente. No dente. Enfiado. Enfiado no dente. And we used this word the other day, atum. Tuna. Atum enfiado no dente. Okay, a piece of. Um bocado de. Sometimes you wouldn't say um bocado de. To say a piece of. A bit of. You could say a different different way, couldn't you? In Portuguese? Um pouco de. Just depending on what it is, right? Yeah. I suppose. Can you think of anything? <laughs> Not at the moment, but... <laughs> so right. So, so um stick buca- with bucais. <laughs> yeah. Um bocado de atum. I have here. Tenho aqui. Tenho aqui. Tenho aqui um bocado de... And the whole thing. Tenho aqui um bocado de atum enfiado no dente. Okay, so I say uh, then ask for a toothpick um, to the waitress. Uh, In the meantime, I'm going there to the bathroom. A casa de banho. To the bathroom. A casa de banho. Eu vou ali. I'm going there. Entretanto, eu vou ali. In the meantime, I'm going there. Entretanto, eu vou ali. À casa de banho. The first phrase, então pede um palito à empregada. Then, ask the waitress for a toothpick. À empregada. À empregada. Pede um palito, ask a toothpick, pede um palito à empregada. Então, pede um palito à empregada. Entretanto, eu vou ali, à casa de banho. Ok, brilliant. So, I say, uh, look... uh... Svashavod, please, uh, by any chance, do you not have some toothpicks? So I ask, olha, Svashavod, por acaso, não tem aí palitos? So you heard the palito, so this is the plural, palitos. Tem aí, do you have there with you? Aí means... Um, Next you know, to you. Near, yeah, something that's next to the person we're speaking to. Tem aí palitos? Não tem aí palitos? Por acaso? By chance. Por acaso? Por acaso não tem aí palitos? And the two other expressions... Uh, unless you're very, very new to this podcast, you would have heard before, se faz favor, but I probably said it, se faz favor, okay, se faz favor, please. Olha, look, but it sounds a bit, hmm, it sounds a bit forceful in English, What's even that? unkind, um, look, olha. Listen. Uh, but in Portuguese, it, it doesn't because we're using the formal version of the verb olhar to look. If I said olha, uh, uh, then it would it'd be too informal when speaking to to a person informal. we don't know. Yeah. Mm, but olha is a very formal way of of um, 
conjugating that verb. Anyway, olha, se faz favor, por acaso não tem aí palitos? Ok. And then uh, she says, yes, they are here. Sim? Estão aqui. Estão aqui. Ok, so I say obrigadinho. So again, the inho at the end is just... Um, it's a little thank you, yeah. it's just a cute thank you. Yeah, it's a nice uh, suffix that we add to words sometimes. Obrigadinho. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So then she asks um, you, um, and are you from here? Uh, os senhores could be the gentlemen, plural, mas, uh, but in this case it's referring to uh, a man and a woman, and when that's the case you use the masculine form. São de cá, are from here. São de cá. São de cá. And you, or and the gentleman, if you like. E os senhores. E os senhores. E os senhores. São de cá. Right, I say no. We're just here a few days on a holiday. No, estamos aqui uns dias de férias. So, férias. Very happy, positive word for you. Férias. Ok? Dias de férias. Dias de férias. Uns. Which simply means some. Uns dias de férias. Não. Estamos aqui... Estamos aqui. So just the whole thing, no. Estamos aqui uns dias de férias. All right, Carla, before you drink from... Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess you're doing this bit here. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> ah, muito bem. Espero que estejam a gostar. Já foram à Quinta Berardo? Ah, very well. I hope uh, you are um, enjoying yourselves. Já foram à Quinta Berardo? Have you been or have you visited? Have you, go have you gone to uh, Quinta Berardo? Which um, is one of the ways um, the, the people from Madeira refer to this place. But um, I found that there's a couple of other ways to uh, refer to this place, which is Jardins da Quinta uh, Monte Palace, or Jardim Tropical Mont Palace, which in English is Mont Palace Tropical Gardens. Beautiful there. Remember when we were there? A few yeah, ago? yeah. If I mean, it's even, I don't know, everyone speaks of the botanical gardens in, in Madeira, but I actually found this a lot more interesting. Yeah, I did. That's actually the one I remember, to be honest. Yeah. So if you ever go, uh, definitely uh, a place to go. Mm. All right? Right. Okay. Já foram a Quinta Berardo? Have you been to Quinta Berardo? Já foram a... Já foram a. Já foram à Quinta Berardo? I hope you are enjoying yourselves. Espero que estejam a gostar. Espero que estejam a gostar. A gostar. Que estejam a gostar. Que estejam a gostar. Espero que estejam a gostar. And the first phrase. Ah, very well. Ah, muito bem. Muito bem. Ah, muito bem. Espero que estejam a gostar. Já foram à Quinta Berardo? Ok, brilliant. So, I say, we're going tomorrow. We're going? Vamos. Which is a very useful word to know, because it simply means let's go, or we're going. So, vamos. 
Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, amanhã. Notice that nasal sound at the end because there's uh, what we call a till um, on top of the final A in amanhã that makes the sound uh, nasal. nasal. So try to say it with me. Amanhã. Amanhã. Mm. You do not want to put the emphasis on amanhã. Like many people do. It's a different word altogether. You want to put the emphasis on the last A, like Marlon just told you. Amanhã. If you were to shout the word, that's the syllable you would emphasize or you'd stress or dwell a little longer. A so how would you second. shout the word, Carl? Amanhã. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. In, just, just as a general rule, whenever you see a diacritic or a little... Uh, pixel or whatever it might be on top of the um, accent um, on top of the vowel mm-hmm. um, then that means that is most likely the uh, syllable we have syllable. to to emphasize i say most likely because there are words that actually have they're very rare two have or little words two are. diacritics and of course when there's two you you're not quite sure which one but whenever there's only one uh, then it, it's pretty easy it's, there's a basic rule is the penultimate syllable is the one that's always a strong, the strong one. That's the one you should stress. And if you have two diacritics, then you have the diacritic and the penultimate s- syllable rule together in one syllable. So that's the strongest. Two rules against the other one. Does that make sense? But anyways, <laughs> the penultimate <laughs> syllable, and if it has a diacritic, then stress that one. Even if there's another diacritic in the same word. Okay, that makes sense. Right. Vamos amanhã. Good? Yeah. All right. Carla. A forma mais fácil de lá chegar é de teleférico. The easiest way of getting there is by a cable car. De teleférico. By cable car. De teleférico. De lá chegar. Of arriving there. De lá chegar. De lá chegar. The easiest way. A forma mais fácil. Mais fácil. A forma mais fácil. A forma mais fácil de lá chegar é de teleférico. Good. So, I say that uh, we actually had noticed, or I had noticed the cable car, but I did not know where it was taking people, where it was going. Por acaso, there again, the by chance, um, por acaso reparei no teleférico, mas não sabia para onde ia. Para ou para. But, you know, most cases we use para. Para onde ia. Ia. Ia there is actually a conjugated verb. Uh, was going. Para onde ia? But I did not know, mas não sabia. So bit by bit. Sabia. Não sabia. Mas não sabia. No teleférico. Ok? By chance I noticed. Por acaso reparei. Reparei, caso reparei, sorry, acaso reparei, por acaso reparei, and read along with me the whole thing, por acaso reparei no teleférico, mas não sabia para onde ia. So the waitress says, uh, yes, and it's even cheaper than the taxi. Sim, e até é mais barato do que o taxi. Than the taxi. Do que o taxi. Do que o taxi. 
do que o táxi. I would actually say that this way. Do que o táxi. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the E from are. the Q, yeah, it's it's a silent E, you, you know, you don't really pronounce it, and there's, uh, the following word is a vowel. So uh, when that's the case, usually the silent E is pronounced as if it's an I in Portuguese. Do que o táxi. Yeah. It's cheaper. É mais barato. É mais barato. There's one situation where the English is actually a lot shorter to say than the Portuguese. Yeah, because we would barato. say more cheap. Mm -hmm. We don't really have a suffix that will put uh, barato in cheaper. We don't have a cheap cheaper. No, we so have mais barato. Hmm. And it's even cheaper. E até é... E até é... E até é mais barato do que o táxi. The whole line again. Sim. E até é mais barato do que o táxi. Right. I say, ah, pronto. Obrigado pela dica. Oh, ok. Thanks for the tip. Ah, pronto. Ah, pronto. Pronto also has the meaning of something that's uh, done or ready. Mm. Um, or even so a mum could something. shout to the kids, the dinner is ready, o jantar está pronto. Mm -hmm. But pronto here, uh, I mean it in a way uh, that... Um, All right, oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. emphasizes that, oh, okay, I get it, I understand. Obrigado pela dica. So let's say that dica. Dica. Pela, for the, pela dica. Obrigado pela dica. And the whole thing, ah, pronto, obrigado pela dica. You're welcome. De nada. Okay, the easiest way of saying. De nada. So, de nada doesn't mean it's okay. That's all right, don't matter. Some people s seem to think that's what it means, but it actually means you're welcome in response to when someone says thank you. De nada. Yeah. Yeah, because basically you're saying of nothing. Because when you say thank you in Portuguese, you say I'm obliged. And the answer is of nothing. Don't worry. Something I did because I wanted to. Yeah. Okay. And then I come back out of the bathroom Got and uh, I ask if you're ready. And I say, Então, já está? Já está? Já está? Meaning, literally, is it, are you already sorted? Have you resolved it? Já está? Yeah, is it done? Yeah, is it sorted? Yeah. Então, já está? Yep, and I say, I respond in the affirmative, sim. Vamos embora. So, yes, let's go. Embora is redundant uh, in that sentence, but for some reason we still use it. Uh, because we could just say, sim, vamos. Embora simply means um, out or... Away. Away. So... You, you don't have to use it, but it's it's important that you know what it means because it will be used in colloquial Portuguese quite a lot. Sim, vamos embora. And then everybody just says, Boa noite. good evening. Boa noite. Okay. Well, that yeah. didn't take... Uh, didn't take too long, That long? No. Good. Uh, excellent. So, um, I guess we should just say thank you for listening. And if you want to subscribe, please do that. You can do uh, that in iTunes and Stitcher, we're there, and TuneIn Radio. Basically, everywhere you can search for podcasts, you can find us. In fact, I was speaking to a friend, and because in the US, the Echo and the Dot, the Amazon Echo, hmm. has been available for quite a while, 
but in the UK, it's a fairly recent thing, only a few weeks old. Um, now you can actually find this podcast on the uh, Echo. So you ask if you ask Echo for the Portuguese with Carla podcast, it will start to play for you, or it should do, because it pulls it out of TuneIn Radio. But we just wanted to give you a tip, a really interesting, I didn't know this until a few weeks ago. Improving your memory? Yeah. Yeah. If, I mean, we said before, exercise is a great way of, um, to improve your memory. Mm. Um, but this one I wasn't Physical expecting. Physical exercise, yeah. Sorry? Physical exercise. Physical exercise, that's what I meant, yeah. sorry. Um, apparently, chewing gum, mm. that's right. Just chew, not just doing the movement of or chewing something, mm -hmm. but actually having gum in your mouth and chewing it while you're doing vocabulary work improves your memory, the short-term memory, by about 20%. But in one study, and we'll, we'll post this um, on, the, um, on the podcast webpage, portuguesewithcar.com slash podcast11, by the way, uh, where you will find a nice... Interesting uh, audio quiz this week. Quite slow, I think. So another intermediate, I would add. And of mm. course, the flashcards. But on top of that, you'll find a link to this study. And it actually says that if um, for people do, that were tested later on, so give it a gap. Uh, they divided the groups into three, I think. So one had uh, was chewing gum while trying to memorize some random words. And they were tested immediately. Also yeah, and right tested after. immediately. But... I'm just saying there's three groups. So one of them had, was chewing gum. The other okay. one was just, the mo just doing the movement with the mouth. That didn't and do any. And then the control group. And then the control had nothing. And if they, when they were asked to recall those words, moments, just moments, so very short uh, memory, short-term memory exercise, uh, the folks who were chewing gum had a 20% increase in terms of retention of vocabulary they could remember 20 percent more that's incredible yeah it is actually and for those well the same group was then asked to um try and remember the same words but with a much bigger gap time gap and actually on that test the ones who were chewing gum were able to recall words or 36 percent more words i think that's the exact yeah number. yeah i think so that's incredible 30 that's one third over one third than the folks who were not chewing gum or just doing the movement with their mouse mm. so yeah. and there's an excellent tip if you're trying to remember stuff perhaps you're doing the flashcard exercises on our website or whatever it is that you're doing to try and remember some vocabulary just chew some gum yeah it gave a couple of reasons didn't it as to why that would help your memory and the simplest reason uh, was to do with the fact that when you're chewing that increases your heart rate and when uh, um, you increase your heart rate then you get um, a greater or a uh, yeah a greater delivery of things like oxygen into your brain and for that reason um, your brain seems to work better, your memory seems to work better, uh, and you're able to uh, retain things um, a little better. Just just like physical exercise. That's why we often encourage people to exercise before they d practice uh, their Portuguese. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Although I, I am still a huge fan of, of doing the exercise before. Um, I say before because while trying to do Portuguese exercises or learning language learning exercises in general it is pretty hard, but you can do it, perhaps in a treadmill. But uh, exercise, there's a lot more than just blood, um, increase of blood delivery to the brain. There's, there's uh, BDNF um, going on or increase of BDNF in the brain. That, anyway, I don't want to get into that. Um, but it, it really is, is very interesting that mm. chewing gum is, is capable of doing... Um, Helping or improving your yeah, memory. Yeah, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, subscribe on iTunes if you if you like the podcast because it's free. We we sort of just ask people if the um, if they wouldn't mind leaving a review on iTunes and and their rating for it. Uh, but yeah, we just hope you have enjoyed it, and uh, I guess we will see you at some point next week. Let me just put a jingle here. Actually, before before I do that, do you wanna add anything else, Carla? I do. Yeah. So you, uh, we were saying how chewing gum is uh, helpful with your memory, but it, there's obviously disadvantages uh, with it, and one of them is um, 
you uh, it may lead you to swallow some air which then might cause some bloating and some gas. So bear right. that in mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is right. it worth it? Well, I think so, but uh, maybe I'll leave it be, up to you to uh, decide. I was just going to say, maybe there'll be something that you could eat or maybe take to have the the balancing effect. I don't know. It's just the eating, the, 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 if you chew and you're chewing, then you you're swallow swallowing. air. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually some other uh, things that you can do to, um, to increase your memory, just like natural stuff, but maybe we can dig those up and, and share with you in a future episode. Yeah. Right. Well, let me, let me just put the jingle here, reach yeah. out to my iPad. i just say goodbye. Cheerio. And see you next time. It's not playing, is it? Where's yeah. the jingle? Oh, it is. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. See you.